We really have to say at the beginning how badly we all feel, I think the entire Western world feels, about this tragic loss of Notre Dame. Yeah, no, thank you very much. <coughs> I think uh, all uh, in France, everybody is mobilized to rebuild it. That's the, the target now. Our bank is uh, committing and our employees also want to contribute. So, so I think now the next step is to, to go back and, and, and rebuild it. Well, we're all with you in that effort. So let's move on then to uh, Europe more generally uh, and where Europe stands. There's a lot of talk in this program and other programs about the challenges that you, the European economy has in growing right now, and particularly getting inflation back up. How do you see it? Uh, how bad is Europe right now? No, actually, it's not that bad in the sense that uh, growth has been revised downwards, growth projections, but it's, uh, there's no recession uh, overall. Um, it's just that, like in the U.S., uh, growth is not as expected and inflation is not picking up. So interest rates remain low, at zero, actually, or negative. And, um, and I mean, we, we need more investment, I guess, private and public. I think the U.S. Compare, uh, Europe, compared to the U.S., has room to, for maneuver on the fiscal side because debt is going down, deficits are going down. The problem is how you coordinate all these countries to have a really a fiscal boost in case things get worse. I think that's the big question mark. So, German, one thing that people have been talking about is how detrimental negative yielding debt and negative rates has been, uh, have been to European banks. Uh, this chart, uh, if you take a look here, shows the volume of negative yielding debt globally rising dramatically. And you can see that blue line is the uh, Stocks 600 uh, Banks Index, uh, just sort of uh, not flatlining, but barely rising in tandem with the rising negative yielding debt totality. Can European banks be successful with a negative rate regime? Well, I mean, if rates uh, were the same level as in the U.S., we would be as profitable as the U.S. banks. Really? Yeah. So uh, we have negative rates instead of, uh, you know, 2 percent rates in the, like in the U.S. And then we contribute every year to the single resolution fund, which is being built up. And the total, the sum of negative rates and, um, and this contribution is about uh, 15 billion uh, euros that every year the banking system is uh, is giving up basically so that's I call this a tax so if if taxing banks is the best way to stimulate the economy uh, I don't know congratulations <laughs> uh, now they they have to take the decision I mean they uh, if, if I look at Japan if I look at the at Switzerland they have a tiering which reduces the negative impact of, uh, of negative rates uh, on the economy so I think you know that's um, that's that's something that they have to look at. I mean, but they take decision. We, we don't. If you had your old job on the executive board of the ECB, would you be advocating for raising rates? No, I would try to look at you know what what's the impact, <clears throat> and probably the negative rates have had positive impacts on the economy, like you know keeping the euro weak, uh, reducing the cost of risk. The point is now that QE is exiting. Uh, we, I mean, Europe is out of QE. Um, the economy is is really not uh, uh, in great shape. Uh, banks are not in that great shape. Is it still useful? I think that's the question they have to ask themselves, and they have to do the analysis. I think it's not an ideological issue. I think it's a really a pragmatic. Uh,